why and when I'm um, and he cares about that. He cares about that. And I even yeah. a little bit on the planes. I'm grateful to God that he cares about little things like that. Oh, beautiful, beautiful, Stephanie. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. He cares, he cares about every little detail of our lives. Mm. I put it in the chat, but I said, praise him for the extra money that I got that covered the four tires that we unexpectedly had to get. He provides. Amen. Ooh. Amen. Ooh. Amen. You had to get Amen. four, Janice. Somebody hey, said all four of your hey, tires. Guys. All four. They mm -hmm. split them. Mm -hmm. Say what? Y'all have to stay out the neighborhood. They split your tire. <laughs> <laughs> no, we just ran and ran and ran on oh, the tires. Okay. Hey, hey, Michael, that's, that's what happens when you become the vice president of education for the conference and the church school teachers are like, we ain't getting up. We, we need a raise. Oh, mercy. <laughs> oh I understand. All them wow. miles were way before VP. <laughs> <laughs> Four times. Wow. Four. Yeah, God. that's praise, praise for you, Janice. Mm -hmm. Amen. <laughs> it was been hi, Bev. Hey, KK, Carrie. Hey, everybody. Hey, I thought you'd be at AEC. Uh, uh, child, I thought about it, but uh, my car said, stay home. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my car didn't say stay home, but but um, I was going and going. I even went to general conference and wow. some, told, some told me, you know, you need to check. You ain't going a lot. You need, <laughs> you need to check and, and see how things are going with your car. Uh -huh. And and um, I always keep up with my car, um, but I took for granted that it was running so well. And as soon as we got back from um, camp from um, Orlando last weekend, I went to Orlando to right after the uh, general conference. I found out uh -huh. that my brakes, my back brakes were bad and it cost a thousand dollars to get them fixed. Mm. Oh, wow. I found out that my back brakes were, they, they were worn. And um, I thought I had gotten them changed, but I didn't. At the front I did, I thought the man had done all of them, but he didn't. And the backs were gone. And um, I heard a little squeak. So I said, let me just take it in and get it checked. And uh -huh. I prayed to God that I I went in and I got it done that day. Um, and it didn't take all day like I thought it would. Um, it took half a day. But um, that and some other things with the car, I just said, check everything. <laughs> check everything with the car. I had a, 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 a some kind of um, $99 uh I don't know what you call it, but they look after the car. And they, I, give you, um, they give you a care, and um, and 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 I just took care of everything. And now I'm back, back on the road again in Orlando. So, mm. <laughs> but I praise God for safety. I do. Yes, right. So yes, many, yes, right. I'm traveling back and forth. You cannot take for yeah. credit in your own That's city. Right. There's some That's crazy right. drivers yeah. out there, and we had a lot yeah. of them. But um, I thank God for his protection. Amen. Really Amen. Yeah. Beautiful testimony. Amen. He took care of you in the car. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Hi, everybody. The angels hover around you and your tires. Amen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hi, everybody. <laughs> Hi. Hi, everybody. This is Linda Mackey. I just want to say that I had a birthday this week. So oh. happy for that. Happy I'm not going to Happy birthday. <laughs> happy and birthday. I had happy an anniversary. Birthday. <laughs> um, my 43rd, our uh, 43rd anniversary. Congratulations. Amen. Congratulations. Oh, Amen for that. Yeah. And I was in the wedding. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> Not trying to tell my age or anything. <laughs> it's okay. Well, Just be, you be the blessed girl. for the age. That's what I say. You were the flower girl. All right. <laughs> uh, I don't think so. That's a good thing. <laughs> Well, All right. Hey, everybody. Of this hey, everybody. This is Darla. Hey, hey Darla. Darla. Good to hear from you, sister. Yeah, hey, Darla. Just, I, I wanted to come on and thank everybody for your cards, your letters, your prayers, your phone calls, your texts. Uh, it really meant the world to me. Lolita's in the car. Hey, Lolita. Hey, girl. This is belated. Hey. Hey, Mo, this is Prevent. We're thrilled to hear from you both. 
Yes. Absolutely. Yes, yes. It's been a while since we've been able to be on, but that's right. We understand. We're glad yeah. to see you. Absolutely. It's uh, yeah, a really nice tribute to your dad and, and yeah. uh, I'll support him this morning. Yeah, I yeah. sent, yeah. I, I, I sent a um, I sent a reminder to Robert Smith and Norman Miles. They forgot Darla's husband and Stephen Boyce as they were, you know, me memorizing or memorializing those. They were doing passes. conference presidents. <laughs> yeah, but you know, those passes do the same kind of work. I understand, I understand, but they were doing president. Mm -hmm. I know I, I'm with you. I yeah. hear you. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I hear you. Can't because yeah, uh, they, past they, they still but they still should have mentioned the, the pastors as yeah. well. I absolutely. Think. They didn't yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because they have to do the big deal, but I do think that yes, it was worthy of an honorable mention. Absolutely. Because yeah. Pastor Adams was was the head of our security for camp meeting. Right. My son worked under him. My, yeah. my the one in the military, he worked under him for, and so did my granddaughter. Yeah, I agree. And Pastor Boyce was in charge of location. Yep. Yeah, location, right. right? For years, for years. Yes. Hi, yeah. Carrie and Janice. Um, Roland is switching computers because he was having some some challenges okay. with getting into Zoom. So I think what we can do is probably start the program and um, go into that. And I'll work with Roland in terms of getting that connection going on his end. So uh, feel Sounds free to start good. anytime you want to. Carrie, thank you for the praise, re praise reports. It's all everybody for the praise reports. That was those. those I, I thank incredible. you for the idea. <laughs> thank you for the idea. <laughs> um, it's always good to share testimonies, encourage each other. This is just the beauty of Zoom Kelly family worship. <laughs> the brainchild of Jerry Warren, connecting with Eric and Dane and Nadine and Lori, just a few friends, family getting together, Elder Kelly. Nolette and I got joined in along with Carrie and Stephanie and all of you. And we are so happy to connect as we do every two weeks. I mean, every, it's been two years. That's what was in my mind. Let me bring up the slide presentation, going through the order of service. If this is your first time with us, we welcome you. Thank you to Dane and Michael and Carrie for meeting and greeting and having fun and teasing <laughs> the beginning of today's worship service. This is as you already heard, where we support, we encourage, we laugh, we cry, we care for each other. Wonderful things have been done through you on this Zoom family worship. I'm one of those recipients, as many of you are. Some of it anonymous, some of it quiet, but always support. Announcements we will go through. Then we enter the sanctuary, we'll have opening prayer. I'll ask one of you to do that. A word from Elder Kelly, which is always rich. Music, introduction of our speaker, then music, and a wonderful word that you'll hear more from Dane about our, present, our presenter today. Prayer and praise reports at the end, closing prayer, and then exit to the foyer, hearing from Dane, the tent master and the lovely one, hearing what's coming up next. If it is your first time here, please put your information in the chat. We'd love to continue to connect with you. Our theme for today, for God so loved the world. Zoom family worship today, June, July 2nd. Eric always finds some interesting announcements, so I thought I'd find some interesting ones too. Not like Eric, because I'm not Eric, but I did find some actual announcements in church bulletins. Thursday night potluck.
prayers and medication to follow. If any of you have been to potluck dinners at church, they can be wonderful and there can be some interesting items. <laughs> the evening service tonight, the, the sermon topic, what is hell? Come early to listen to our choir. <laughs> Next Thursday, the tryouts for the choir, they need all the help they can get. <laughs> When I was an Aeolian at Oakwood with Alma, Friday nights, we would be given the bulletins to determine what the hymn of the day was. This particular Friday night, as we looked at the bulletin, it titled, as always, The Sick and the Shut-In, but in this case, the word that was incorrect was not caught by technology because it was spelled correctly. It said the sick and the curse word in. We were all blacking out the bulletins that night. <laughs> Things that happen in the bulletins. <laughs> this is a real announcement. Wonderful things are happening on the Zoom prayer each Sabbath. 12.15, 2.15, 3.15 in the various time zones for half an hour prior to family worship. Please join if you so desire. God is blessing. As always, mute when there is not group sharing. We've heard some interesting things while people are unmuted and don't know, especially when coming in, all kinds of discussion. So just make sure to hit the mute button. Chat is a rich place to share, to connect. You can direct chat with anyone within the group. Use that function as well. And that's where you put your prayer requests and praise reports when we get ready to pray. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. Romans 8, 28. That was the scripture this morning for Allegheny East. Beautiful. Let's start with opening prayer. I'm going to look through. I see my cousin, Jason. Would you be willing to give the opening prayer today? Okay. Very Thank good. You so much. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we're grateful for this Sabbath day and for the opportunity to gather as friends and family. We pray that our service today will be enriching for all and that we will be truly blessed by being together for this little bit of time. We thank you for the praise reports because we know that you're always there and have our backs, whether we want you to or not. We pray for our speaker today and for our music that all will be enriching for us. Thank you for your love and your many blessings. Amen. Amen. Elder Kelly, are you with us? We know you have a word. Yes, I am. thank the Lord that I am able to be with you. It's a privilege. I enjoyed your comments. And, uh, you know, as it would always be said, you know, it doesn't end down here. It ends over there at the tree of life. And, and we look forward to being with everyone in the family at that time. I just had uh, some statistics that I wanted to share with you. And they are, I asked one of my friends just before we came on, how many people die every day in the United States of America? He said 8,295 people die every day in the United States of America. Please remember that you are passing some of those people that will never be seen again. 
in your travels on the plane, in the store, please ask the Lord to give you the ability to be a representative of Jesus Christ in your disposition, in your words, in your thoughts, in your smile, in your facial expression, so that God can at least leave a memory on their hearts and minds that I met somebody who made a difference in my life. May God bless you and may God bless Brother Roland Gresham and our guest today. And thank you again uh, for all that you all have done in my life through the family worship. God bless you. Amen. 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 Thank you. Amen. 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 Dane, if you'll introduce our speaker today. Well, it's a big relief that he is on. <laughs> we got him hooked up, so we're happy that he's uh, with us. Um, Alumni weekend, Nadine and I ran into Roland um, Sunday at uh, at the uh, at the complex, the church complex, and uh, he had his table and he was uh, uh, signing and and selling uh, his CDs. And so uh, we kind of bent his arm a little bit and asked him if he would be willing to join us and explain to him about our, our family Zoom worship program. And um, in talking to him, he had a, he had a, um, a, a testimony wrapped around the pandemic that, that I thought would make for um, a very compelling um, message to our group. But I want to give you a little bit of context about Roland. He sent me his bio yesterday. We talked for about a half an hour. Um, Roland is a native of Nashville, Tennessee. He received his musical influence from his father, who was a jazz guitarist. Roland began playing the guitar at age six. He learned to play by ear, had no formal training, and actually hard to believe Roland does not read music. In 1988, Roland began a full-time career in the music ministry, traveling throughout the United States and abroad, playing at churches of all denominations. In 2001, he relocated to Athens, just outside of Huntsville, where he resides with his wife, Janine, and their teenage son, Eric. To date, he has recorded 10 CDs. So uh, praise the Lord for his, his production over the year, including his latest entitled Taste and See, which features songs that you all will recognize, Nobody Greater, Take Me to the King, and Every Praise. So if you are a Hezekiah Walker fan or a uh, if you are a Vashon uh, Mitchell fan, or if you are um, a fan of the protege of Kirk Franklin, which would, um, her name escapes me right now. Um, Take Me to the King is one of the anthems that has been out for a while. So anyway, we're happy to have Roland on today. He's going to be our special music and he's going to be our speaker of the hour today. And uh, after the special music, uh, the next voice that you will hear will be that of our guest today, uh, Brother Roland Gresham from Athens, Alabama. I am pleased to say that all the music today will be presented via YouTube for of Roland Gresham's music. It is smooth, it's inspiring, it's soulful, it is spirit-filled. Enjoy, nobody greater. Please mute during the song.
awaiting your work. Well, good afternoon, uh, family worship family. Hey, Roland. Amen. Hey, well, Roland. Hey, Alessia, <laughs> hey, good to see you. Hey, you too. We got to talk. <laughs> well, I tell you, uh, I, I think that, uh, first of all, I'm happy to be a part of your meeting today. And, and can everyone hear me okay? Yes. Okay. Uh, I believe that uh, the Lord prepares us all difficult times and we'll just look back in the past of how many times he's brought us through something you know whether it was uh, small or large he's trying to let us know hey i got you no matter what happens uh, you muted yourself roland You're everybody muted, muted. i'm muted Everybody's muted. Okay, I think I'm off mute now. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, I have played at several of the uh, large non-Adventist churches on Sunday mornings. And I believe that in my music ministry, 
this is, these are some of the things that the Lord did to let me know, no matter what happens, don't forget about these things I've done for you in the past. Uh, as a church in Houston, uh, Brentwood Baptist Church, played there back in the early 90s, played Order My Steps at all three services. And when we got to the hotel and counted the money, it was $9,850 from one song. Uh, many of you have heard of Dr. Tony Evans in Dallas. Every time I play at his church, it's usually $7,500, $8,500 in CD sales. Now, I'm sad to say that doesn't happen everywhere I go. But the Lord is letting me know that, hey, just like I bless you then, even when times are tough, I'm going to bless you. So, uh, and again, this is a sort of preamble before I get to the pandemic. Uh, the home that we have here that the Lord blessed us with in 2001, we have been, because of difficult times, we've been in foreclosure five times. Five times in foreclosure. Recording in progress. And the first two or three times that that happened, I was just scared to death. And then I became a veteran. <laughs> like, okay, bring it on, Satan. So uh, well, I wound up doing a chapter 13. Uh, this was uh, maybe about a two years or so before the pandemic. The lawyers told me that if you don't make these payments on your home uh, while you're in the chapter 13, if you miss one, we're going to relieve you from the chapter 13. And that's going to mean that you won't have the protection of chapter 13. And you'll have to pay all of that money that you're behind. I was at a point where I said, well, I don't have the money, but I'm going to go to my bank and ask them. I'm going to write this check. And then when it comes through, you make sure you pay it and I'll take care of it later. And they said, okay. The check never arrived to the lawyers. I mean, to this day, that we don't know what happened. So they removed us from the chapter 13. And then we were thinking, uh-oh, this is it. So I called the, my attorney. She said, why don't you just call the mortgage company and explain to them what's happening? So I called the mortgage company, and they said, well, you probably need a, a modification. I said, a modification? I don't think we follow. We've, we've, gotten, we've used all the modifications that we have available. He said, yeah, you want a modification, right? <laughs> I said, okay, I guess. He said, we're going to send you a, a, a big, stack of papers that you have to sign. I said, yeah, I'm familiar with that. When the FedEx truck came, I feel like that I uh, hold my mule while I child. <laughs> when the FedEx truck came, I opened the envelope and there was one sheet of paper in there that said, congratulations, you've been modified. And I looked at it and said, wait a minute, <laughs> modified. It said, now your mortgage payment, instead of $1,180, it's going to be $740. And I never even signed a thing. And so that was just another one of those times when God said, look, no matter what happens, I got you, no matter what it is. So let's fast forward to the end of 2019. I was on my way to Florida. I had just left home and driven about 15 miles. I had to stop three times to go to the bathroom, and nothing was coming out. And I said, uh-oh. So I turned around, turned around and raced back home. By that evening, I was in so much pain, I had to go to the emergency room. And so uh, they said, uh, you've got to have some blockage because of your prostate. So they drained all that fluid. And I was like, oh, thank you, Jesus. What a relief. So uh, a couple of days later, we found out that I was going to have to have prostate surgery. It wasn't cancer, thank the Lord but it was an enlarged prostate. The doctor said it was about the size of a small orange. So I'm thinking to myself, okay, surgery, that's going to mean I can't go out and play and sell my CDs like I normally do. The doctor said, yeah, you'll probably be down for about three months. And I'm thinking, Lord have mercy. And the surgery was in February of 20. So I'm thinking, how am I going to make it until April? Little did I know that the pandemic was right at the door. And so as soon as the doctor said, Brother Roland, you're doing fine now. Uh, you're released to go back to, oh, wait a minute. You play at churches, don't you? And all the churches are closed. I said, that's right. So uh, all of that 
is to let me know that because of the things the Lord had done before, when I was faced with the pandemic, I never broke a sweat. I just said, well, uh, Janine, Lord, we don't know how he's going to do it, but we know he's going to do it. And so uh, I was sitting at my dinner table. This was about a year ago. And the, my cell phone rang. This lady said, uh, Brother Gresham, you probably don't remember me. You played at uh, my husband and I. We had a, a 20th wedding anniversary. This was about 21 years ago. And I always wondered, how did my husband get Roland Gretchen to play here in Washington, D.C. at our little, I said, ma'am, I really don't remember that. I was probably there to play maybe for a concert that evening. And he may have asked me if I could stay over and play. It was something like that. She said, well, at any rate, I have always wanted to do something for you. And so the Lord impressed me to call you today. And uh, she said, do you have cash app? I said, yes, ma'am. It's dollar sign Roland Gresham. She said, okay, well, I'm sending it now. Now, it's not much. And I heard my phone go ding. Now, when she said that, I just pictured in my mind, you know, when people say, I'm going to send you something, it's not much. You figure, oh, maybe $50, 100 200 maybe. So I hung up from her, and I looked at it. And it was $2,020. $2,020. So I, I picked up the phone after I asked my wife, does that say $2,020? <laughs> said, yeah, $2,020. So I called the lady back and I said, ma'am, what do you call much if this isn't much? Uh, if you had a sent more than that, I probably would have been on the way to the hospital. <laughs> having a stroke or something. She said, well, but uh, my, my husband actually passed away recently. And I was like, oh, no. She said, yeah. And so, uh, like I said, I've always wanted to do something for you. And so with the money that came from the insurance from him passing, the Lord reminded me that I wanted to do something for you. And when that money came, it was right on time. I mean, right on time. Uh, even before that happened, uh, the uh, you heard about the PPP loans that people could get if they had a small business. Well, I called this person who had uh, helped my niece out, and he said, yeah, yeah, we, we should be able to get to the PPP loan, PP loan. And so he had me to fill out all the paperwork, and we actually got that a PP loan, PPP loan that we didn't have to pay back. That was a blessing. So, uh, and I, I think I may need to, I don't know, Sister Janice, do you want me to pause here and so you can play another song? If you would like, we will add it right in. I think this is a good time, you know, because we serve a holy God and because he's so holy, he knows everything about all of us at the same time. And he knows what we need before we know we need it. Amen. <laughs> Thank you. 
Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. So uh, God is so holy. Uh, I was I was telling about the uh, PPP loan, where the gentleman arranged for me to uh, get the PPP loan, and then one day I got an email that said something about PPP loan, and I said, "Well, that doesn't apply to me. I already got mine." So uh, uh, he called me. I had just come home from the store. He calls me. Hey, did you get that information about the PPP loan? I said, we already did that, remember? He said, no, 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 there's some more that you can get. You, and I said, well, I, I got an email the other day, but I, I didn't pay attention to it. He said, did you delete it? I said, no, I don't think so. He said, well, go in there and fill out that information. You can get another $15,000. I said, well, are you sure? So I went and filled out the paperwork, and sure enough, I got another $15,000. And I know that that was God because I was dismissing the idea, thinking, well, we got one. That's all they're going to do. But the Lord said, no, I'm not finished with you. Remember, I'm holy. I got more for you. So uh, God has sure enough been taking care of me. And uh, even in the face of the pandemic, which still, it's, it's still keeping me from being able to go out to the churches like I used to, even though some uh, churches are open, but there's limited uh, capacity is still not letting uh, full membership be there. So uh, pretty much I'm still staying at home like I've been doing for the past two and a half years. Uh, a young lady in Nashville, Tennessee was talking to me one day on the phone. She said, well, Roland, uh, now that you're in your mid 60s, I am 66, January the 27th, 1956, a baby boomer. Uh, she said, what are you going to do for retirement? You're not going to just keep on going around playing at churches until you're in your 80s, are you? I said, well, no, actually, I I've had some plans of doing this tribute to Michael Jackson. And she says, oh, well, look, uh, I, I have some money. Let me know when you get ready to do that, and uh, I'll help you. And I said, really? She said, sure. And I don't want anything out of it. So I go to the studio and get started. And then I contact her and say, okay, now here's what we're going to be needing. And she says, well, I don't think I'm going to be able to help you after all. <laughs> so she just kind of left me hanging. I said, okay, I'm not worried about that. I'll just keep on plugging along. So we've been working on it, uh, you know, waiting on some other funds, asking for donations and what have you. But uh, because the Lord has uh, blessed me in so many ways, I mean, there's a thousand other stories I could tell, but I won't take the time to tell all of those. Uh, like the time I was at a, a Baptist church in Atlanta, and I got up there, and before I played, the pastor, they had a female pastor, she said, we serve a God who will see you anything. You might be behind in your mortgage, and God will see you through it. And I was behind in my mortgage at the time. So when she finished her sermon, she said, we have Brother Roland with us again. Brother Gresham, come on up and play. So I walked up there, and I said, you know, the pastor was right. I'm behind in my mortgage right now by about five months. And the audience went, ooh. I said, but that's all right, because the Lord has kept me in the house. I haven't received any kind of notifications that I've got so many months to move out. So I played my song and went out there to set up my CDs, and a gentleman comes walking up. He had this frown on his face. I think the Holy Spirit was telling him to do something that he didn't want to do. <laughs> so he says, uh, I was touched by your testimony. I said, praise the Lord. He said, uh, I want to sow a seed in your ministry. Now I'm thinking, why is he frowning? This doesn't feel right. He's frowning and saying he wants to sow a seed. So he took out his checkbook and he wrote a check for three thousand dollars. Now I've never had anybody at any church just walk up and hand me that much money. Usually it might be a, a five or a ten, maybe a twenty, saying God bless you. A check for three thousand dollars, and I wasn't asking for a donation that day. I was just testifying that God was good, but. Holy Spirit spoke to him and said, write him a check for $3,000. So I have, you, you, you've heard a song that, uh, uh, how many times must I prove how much I love him? So the Lord has blessed me, and I'm sure he's done the same thing for each and every one of you who are, are watching and listening. God has done so much for us. And my wife will tell you that I'm always saying, we have to be like the three Hebrew boys. We believe that God can do anything, but if he chooses not to do the thing that we want, we still have to praise him because God doesn't have to do anything. 
you know, remember we are all sinners, born in sin and shaped in iniquity. And in our in our best moments of trying to say, I'm a Christian, we're still sinners. And so God doesn't have to do anything, but because he loves us, he wants us to believe in that love and trust in him that he knows what's best for us. So when we present to him our petitions, all we have to do is just stand back and, and do like Job. Hey, the Lord giveth, the Lord taketh away. If he wants to take this house away, praise the Lord anyway. If he wants to bless me and keep this house, praise the Lord anyway. Whatever God wants, that's what I want. So anyway, that's that's my testimony. Uh, through this pandemic, I'm still here. Uh, I think I was teasing with Dane and Nadine about how they can tell I haven't lost any weight from not eating <laughs> during the pandemic. <laughs> well, God is blessing. Praise the Lord. Roland, your story reminds me of any of those stories of God's people. When you trust him, life is an adventure. Amen. But you're in peace because you're in his arms. Amen. That's right. Amen. Now, you know, Roland, we go way, way, way. Way back. Way back. Okay. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> you, you came and played for my 50th birthday. You remember? And, That's right. and we were, were friends way before that. Before you know, that. that That's right. I'm not going to say how many years ago that is, <laughs> but my son is 53. Okay. My Lord, oldest son. <laughs> but anyway, you said there were many, many stories that you can tell. There's one, if you remember, that uh, uh, sticks out in my mind that I have cried over. Mm -hmm. Remember when we were, I think, at the Festival of the Laity, and I think we were yeah. eating and all of your equipment got stolen out of your car. And the, 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 uh, the venue where the, the meetings were could not compensate you because it was not on their premises and that thing hurt me so bad for a long time elestia thank you for the lead-in roland would you continue that story please well sure uh i had actually like i said there's so many stories i didn't even think of that one but during the festival of lady i believe this was in 2002 yeah and mm -hmm. uh we sold CDs, I think, that Thursday and Friday, and it totaled about $6,000. And a lot of the people who uh, purchased CDs from us used their credit cards. And a lot of people wrote checks. Uh, and so on that uh, evening, we went out to an olive garden to eat. Now, this is in Orlando, Florida. And uh, we parked right. in the back because there was no parking in the front. Poured down rain in that evening. Yep. And we had a satchel. Now, I have to uh, make this statement. It actually, a lot of people, I don't know how that got out, that it was my equipment, Elestia, because it actually wasn't the equipment. I almost wish they had taken that and knocked that little bag. But the equipment was safe. But they took that little satchel that I had. They probably thought it was a laptop. Mm -hmm. Instead, it had that little money bag in it with right, $1,000 right. in it. Right. So we get back to the car after we had eaten and it was raining. And so I had to go in on the other side to get in. And so when we got to the hotel, it's when we discovered, hey, look, I just messed with the lock. And then my wife said, wait a minute, my purse. And she reached and her purse was gone. And I said, uh-oh, the money bag. And I turned around, that bag was gone. $6,000 gone. So, uh, when we got to the church that Sabbath morning, I informed Elder Johnson mm -hmm. that uh, he needed to make the announcement so that anybody who wrote checks or used their credit cards could cancel those cards, cancel those checks, so that they wouldn't be hurt by the thieves who stole that bag. So uh, we sold CDs again that night. And uh, I'm telling you, Lester, you remember when I played that song, mm -hmm. Off Alone? Yes. It, it was so hard to get through that song. Yeah, because I knew that even though I lost that money, money God was with me. So that night, the the uh, committee they did come walk into my table, and they were carrying this big tray of money. Mm -hmm. I remember <laughs> like that thousand dollars in cash. Yeah, yeah. 
And it was almost like a parade of people walking with that tray. And then there were several people who came to the table and they had already purchased CDs before they came and purchased CDs again. Yeah. And people just came up giving us money. Uh, that Sabbath, after they made the announcement, people just walking up, I didn't even know them. Yeah. And they're just sticking money in our hands. And it was really something. I mean, I think when that happened, that was another way the Lord was saying, well, I know they took your money, but I got you covered. Yes, you got indeed. all these. And I told my wife, I said, I wonder why they didn't take up an offering. Because it was like 7,000 people in there and everybody mm -hmm. just gave $5. Yeah. <laughs> But that wasn't what God wanted. So, uh, but yeah, that was a terrible time, and it did teach me: you're out of town, and you got your money in that bag. Don't you go yeah. in no yeah. restaurant and leave it sitting in the car. Yeah. Take it in there. Yeah. With you. yeah, I would like yeah. to ask if there, without opening the floodgates, if there is anyone that has a direct question they would like to ask Roland, you can put it in the chat. Testimonies of being in God's hands are so encouraging. Amen. But as Michael wrote in the chat, it takes faith and courage. That's right. To live in the hands of God. That's right. And, you know, I, I want everybody to know, too, that out there on the road, it is a dangerous thing. I, I've said it so many times, those 18-wheelers, uh, sometimes I think they're on their radio saying, anybody seen that guitar player? Oh, I see him. He's driving a rental car. Uh, he's got a white t-shirt on. Okay, anybody close to him, run him off the road. <laughs> I mean, it's like they wait till I right beside him, then they start coming over. I've had that happen so many times. But praise the Lord, I've never been in an accident. Uh, 33 years of traveling on the road. Amen. We're going to move into prayer requests and praise reports. Stephanie will lead that. I will be playing one of Roland's songs, Give Thanks, during the, that time. But Stephanie, if you will go ahead and lead out while people put their prayer requests and praise reports in the chat. Thank you, Roland, for your testimony, which reminds us that during the pandemic, but certainly before and after, right, we still can praise God for his provision. We can praise him for the peace that he gives because you've talked about the peace that you had even with those 18 wheelers running down behind you that when we know we are in God's hands. So we're gonna ask you now to put your prayer requests in the chat, put your praise reports in the chat. We've heard the praises from um, Roland and we wanna be reminded on this 4th of July weekend of God's promises to give us freedom that we have been, we're in Christ, and so we are free indeed. But I ran across a scripture today that says, not only are we free, but we also are. He says, live as free people. We are free, and we need to have mindsets that tell us we're free. And maybe in our prayer requests, our praise reports, we're praising God for some freedoms that we have. And that we are to not give, use our freedom as a cover for evil, but to live as God's slaves. We have been set free in Christ. And because of that freedom, we can be, his, we're free to give ourselves to him in praise, in thanksgiving, in seeking his provision, his protection, his peace. So please put your request in the chat right now praising God, petitioning God for, for yourself. And as Elder Kelly said earlier, for others, the 8,000 some that will, will walk past or may not walk past, for the others that we may not know that we're having an impact on, let us pray and, and remember that we are taking these requests to the throne. And I'm gonna ask two people I'm going to ask you as you've written your prayer request, and I only see six in the chat. Come on, I know we want something to praise God for, something to petition. You can say unspoken. You can say the request and make, make the names be unknown because this is our opportunity to come together to intercede on behalf of others, to praise God 
for what he has done, to ask him for that protection that Roland said he's been getting these 30 plus years, to ask him for that peace, to ask him for that financial blessing that Roland has talked about um, for us. And there may be others who need you to stand in the gap for them by putting their needs in this prayer chat request right now. And so we're gonna play a song and as that song is played, I'm going to ask you after you put yours in or you see one that you would now silently pray over, just choose one and pray over that request. And I'm going to ask um, Donna Richards and I'm going to ask Michael Childs if they would pray audibly for the prayer request as they are coming in through the chat right now. After the song is played, then we'll hear the prayers audibly by Thank Michael and by Donna.
beautiful amen. If you have not already done so, please feel moved to continue to add to the chat as we go now through this list. And as we are reading the names again, if you would hook on to one of them and continue and not only keep this person in prayer and pray a silent prayer now, but even throughout the week, if you would continue to lift these individuals in prayer. And so Janice wants to ask us to pray for Kevin Thorne and Michelle P, but she also has a praise report today because CJ is turning 35 years old today. Congratulations, Janice and JP and CJ. Helen Brown, who we've been praying for, who has lost her husband recently, is asking that we now pray for her children. Um, Alicia is thanking God for his protection over her oldest son, who was a long distance truck driver, and for all of her children. Elaine Davis is asking that we pray for Deborah Davis, for Yvette Wright, and Kelly Smith. And for them, we want complete healing and restoration. Curry is asking us to pray for, his, for children's salvation. I think that's for all the children on this line. We want to pray and ask God to save our children and that they would seek salvation as well. Um, please pray for Pastor George Thornton. Um, Vincent Street has an unspoken request. Chaplain Robert Peters, thank, thank you for praising God for freedom from the punishment for sin and freedom from the present enslavement of sinful traits. That's a praise and a prayer request that we will be set free from our sinful traits that we want to cling to. Another unspoken from Lou and Velna Christopher. Marlene Roberts is asking us to pray for her nephew, Craig Small, and her friend, Faye Nurse. Vicki Joyner, yes, Vicki, we are praying for your family and the loss of your matriarch. We certainly are praying for you and for all of those who have lost loved ones. Talisa is asking for prayer for her family, her friends, and for the entire body of Christ. Doris Baker is asking for prayer because on July 5th, she's having eye surgery. And she wants to praise God's blessing, pray and praise for God's blessings on all of her family members. Carrie, you want to take on from here? Sure. Eileen Ruff is asking for prayer for her husband's health, her son-in-law's safe return from Israel. Sheila Cole is asking for prayer for her family and an unspoken request. Clara is asking continued prayer for Roland and his ministry. In her praise report, she recovered from COVID. Hallelujah. Continued prayer request for the Artis family and unspoken requests. Rhonda is asking for prayer for family members who have not committed to Christ that they will accept his salvation. Melody is asking for prayer over her music, music ministry to learn and remember the lyrics for all the venues thus far this year. That's a big one. <laughs> and that God will use her to minister according to his will. And she says, hallelujah, to God be the glory. Myra is asking uh, for prayer for Amber Bullock and Amaya and also her daughter's next steps, her retirement plans and an unspoken request. Elaine uh, Davis is asking for a conversion of her nephew, Jay. And Uncle Phil has an unspoken request as does Barbara Howard. Uh, Gil Webb has a praise report, thanking God for sparing the lives of her their daughter and six children that rolled over three times off the interstate. Ooh, hallelujah. Uh, Bev Gregg is asking for the, uh, the Lord's comforting peace to be with uh, Beverly Artis and her entire family over the recent loss of uh, Walter Artis. All right, uh, Janice. Beverly. Just a minute, we'll just need to. Yes, Do you need your nurse? Do you need your nurse? Yes. Um, I, gotta okay. find my... I can't reach that, Janice. Can you, can you do the uh, I'm mute? looking to see if I can as well. Okay. So I right. just... uh, Beverly Howard is asking us to pray for yeah. her daughter, Kalia. Let's start with, let's start with Roxy. And that had been sent to me directly. So I wanted to make sure okay. that everyone okay. had gotten that. 
Yes. Uh, Roxy is asking for continued prayer for the Smiley Carter mm -hmm. One Accord for the Truth and Unspoken. Denise for the many families that have suffered loss this week and that she will follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. Perrette is asking for prayer for a, a financial blessing for their family's business, women working with women. Denise is asking for the mentioned, as she mentioned, the leading of the Holy Spirit. Beverly Howard healing for her and improved mobility. Angela is praising God. The last surgery has improved her kidney pain. We've been praying for you, Angela, for two years. Mm -hmm. And we are praying with you for complete healing, leaving it in the hands of God, his time, his way. She's praying for his strength and calm in the storms. Shirley Gideon, prayer for removal of malignant tumor surgery on Tuesday. Linda is asking us, Linda Mackey, to pray for Cookie Mackey, her husband's brother who lost his son this week. The, Jesus knows the heartache. God knows the heartache. They, Trinity knows the heartache that we feel when we lose a loved one on this earth. Perrette is thanking God for his provision and his protection. Barbara Howard is asking for Prayer for Garnetta Thomas, who's in the hospital. Kenny Anderson is asking us to pray for his mother-in-law, who we've been praying for, for, and she just celebrated her 78th birthday. She's making progress. God is answering prayers the way we want to. He doesn't always answer our time, but he answers, and he's got the whole world in his hands. Lolenthia is praising God for love, grace, mercy, blessings for the family worship team. Amen. God mirrored my mortgage testimony to today's speaker and saving my life from death. It is vital to each of us to pray without ceasing for one another every day. Those grieving, illness, our families, friends, unspoken requests, this world God holds so de so dear and from the person listed as alpha omega curry pray for matthew daryl vincent caitlin justin Kristen, sean micah cullen cynthia may cameron chelsea lee and all of my god children i want to meet them all in the kingdom Amen. Of course, if there are any additional prayer requests, unspoken, please list in the chat. We are praying all for each other. Um, Stephanie has asked for Michael Childs and Donna Richards to pray. And Roland, if you don't mind, I will ask you to close. Let us pray. Loving Father in heaven. Stony the road we've trod, bitter the chastening rod felt in the days when hope unborn had died. Yet with a steady beat have not our weary feet come to a place for which our fathers have sighed. We have come over the way that with tears have been watered. Oh God, we are thankful that you looked through the annals of time and you saw this group. You saw these people in need of prayer. You saw this group that have, you've given us an opportunity to have a dress rehearsal. During the time of trouble, we know exactly what to do and how to do it through prayer and supplication as we meet together in separate places. We thank you for, oh God, this technology, which we are able to connect all over this, this world in these United States. We're thankful for the prayers and the music where we must be intentional as we evangelize using that medium. Oh God, you, you, you've heard all of the, the needs that, that we have and, and all of the prayers and the praise reports 
And we do understand, oh God, that you've blessed many of us, not as a American farmer who uses his silo to gather all of the wealth for his crop and his family. You blessed us to bless others and we've heard the needs today. So we ask that we will open up our hearts and our wallets to bless those who are in need. Oh God, we, we're just thankful for this opportunity to praise you today. Uh, we are not perfect, oh God, yet we do seek perfection. We thank you for hearing these requests and we pray that you will grant them according to your will. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, God, Savior, friend, brother, we are so very grateful for the privilege and the power of prayer. What would we do? What would become of us if we could not come to you? The Bible says, my heart would have fainted within me had I not believed that I would see the goodness of God in the land of the living, not on the other side, but on this side, in the land of the living. Lord, we need your goodness, your grace, and your mercy. You promised that goodness and mercy would follow us all the days of our lives. Mm. You see the situations that we have brought to you, the circumstances, the, 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 the illness, the sadness, the loss of life, the deaths, the mourning. You see and you know all of these things. But Lord, you are sovereign. You are God. As it says in Jeremiah, be not afraid. For I am the all-wise, all-powerful, ever-present God. I, the Lord, am with you to save you and to deliver you. That's why we pray. That's why we come to you. Because we know you to be faithful. Faithful, full of grace and mercy and long-suffering, full of goodness and truth. And that's what we need as we look at the petitions that are here before us. We need divine attention. We need divine intervention. You see those who have lost loved ones. Oh God, they are in mourning. Have mercy on them and remind them. Hmm, why art thou cast down, O my soul? Why art thou disquieted within me? For we will hope in God. He will help us. When we walk through the valley of the shadow, you have promised that your rod and your staff will comfort us, will be there for us. The shadow of death, the shadow of sickness, the shadow of marriages, the shadow of children gone buck wild, the shadow of life itself, of financial woes. When we walk through those valleys, be with us as you promised to be, because you told us to call upon you in the day of trouble and you would deliver us so that we could give you the glory. And we have listened to Roland Gresham's testimony. You definitely, showed up, showed out, and showed off. You delivered him over and over and over. And now he has given you the glory for that deliverance. We all want that deliverance and we will give you the glory because you are a good God, because you are a great God. You said you will deliver the needy because they cry for help and you will heal the sick because they have no one to help them in Psalms 72. Lord, our needs are many, but they're not too many for you because you're so sovereign. Our list is long. We can't even remember it and recite it, but you know each and every item and circumstance on that list. And you will 
Give individual attention to each one because you are God and sovereign. Lord, we thank you. We praise you because you care for us with unconditional love. When we're naughty, when we're nice, you are there for us. When we are in need, you are there for us. And we are so very grateful. We will sing your praises. But Lord, help us to live your praises. To live so that others can see your glory. It says in the Bible that we should let our works so shine that others may see your glory. Help us to care for one another and each other in our works so that we will give you more glory. Take all the glory you want out of our lives and let us live as if we know a savior personally, not theologically. We need to know you by experience and we praise you for the circumstances, whether they be good, whether they be bad, whether they are joyful, we praise you because the Bible says rejoice in whatever situation you find yourself. And that rejoicing shows our faith and gives you glory. Help us, Jesus. We ask these things in the name of Jesus because of the blood of Jesus. And we thank you, we praise you, and we bless your name now and forever. Amen. 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 Lord, we just want to take the time to thank you again for all of your goodness. I thank you for all of those who are part of this family worship meeting. Uh, thank you for Janice Willis and for Dane and Nadine and Eric Kelly, all of those who are involved in this program. Uh, I know that uh, there are so many things going on in this world, and that's why we're cheerful and thankful that you are here with us, because you create, created this world, you created all of mankind. There's nothing that we go through that you don't already know about way before we we're ever born. So we just thank you for your love. We thank you for your mighty power. I ask, Lord, that you would bless everyone associated with this program. I ask that you would bless all of those who are listening and watching and those under the sound of my voice. I pray, Lord, that as we go through these troubling times, uh, we just pray that you would help us to know that you are right there with us and that we should have no fear of anything that comes our way. And anything that feels like it's too tough for us, we just want to just hand it over to you, Lord, and just let you handle it, because you're the only one who can absolutely handle it. So, Lord, we just thank you for uh, all of your blessings. We thank you for the gift of music that you've given to me. Thank you, Lord, that it has blessed so many people uh, in the United States and abroad. And I pray, Lord, that you just continue to keep your hand are wrapped around me, keep me in the palm of your hands, my family. And Lord, we just pray that uh, as we go through uh, the coming years, that we would always trust in you for all of our dealings. Lord, everything that we, all the challenges that we come against, we just pray that you would solve them all because we know that you can. Thank you, Lord, for all of your blessings. We look forward to the day when you'll come back and take us away from this ridiculous world. And Lord, until then, we'll just keep holding on. These things we ask, Lord, in your name. Amen. 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 Roland, you have richly blessed us. Praise it's the Lord. Us full with <laughs> praise and thanks Amen. for the testimony that you've shared. I have to laugh. I always thought seeing you out there and playing and being all over the place, I thought you were older. We share the same birth year. <laughs> Amen. 
<laughs> amen, amen. <laughs> and, and you know, but before we end, can I put this in? Uh, several people have asked me now. I, I was trying my best not to mention that other project that I'm working on because it's Sabbath. But already people are asking, when is it coming out? And so uh, we're hoping that it will be finished by the uh, first part of November, maybe the end of the year. It just depends on the funding. And uh, there are some people who are already saying they're going to send some money to help out. So we praise the Lord for that. Uh, and also, I don't think we mentioned that my cash app is dollar sign Roland Gresham. And then also, uh, if they would like to send a check, some people are still old school and like to send a check. Uh, my address is 20549 Highway 127, Athens, Alabama, 35614. That's 20549 Highway 127, Athens, Alabama, 35614. And I just want to say thank you again to everyone who was on this uh, Zoom meeting. Thank you for your support over the years. And uh, People always ask me, hey, are you still playing? And I tell them, as long as I can do my fingers like this, <laughs> I'm still going to be playing. <laughs> Before we go to Dane's tent master spot, we have one last song to play of Roland's. And while Janice is preparing that, I just want to thank the real Roland Gresham for being here today. <laughs> <This is great. laughs> <laughs> <laughs> that will play in just a moment. Let me say, Janice, that you know, Roland's a country boy. Roland, Roland, I saw you. Yeah, he is. Your face and your dad's picture, man. I'm going to ask everyone to please mute before the music.
I mean, Carrie told me that I played that one already. And there are four songs. So, Roland, help me. Which one did I not play? <laughs> so <that's laughs> because twice. none of us will be sad to hear another. <laughs> I started with Nobody Greater. We played Like the Dew. No, we didn't. No, we didn't. Uh, no, we didn't play did like not that. Hear, you didn't hear that. Okay, no. then that's it. <laughs> Enjoy. <laughs>
West Montgomery playing his Les Paul. His masters given to you. Yeah. Roland and I go way, way back in the days of Meharry and Jefferson Street. <laughs> Can't hear hey, you. Pastor Dane. Oh, it's it's on me now, I guess. It's huh? on you. <laughs> okay. Um, there's a text that comes to uh, to my mind, and it's uh, Hebrews eleven six. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Um, and, and, and in Roland's coming and going, he, he has sought God, and God has seen fit to, to show his favor upon him, even during the toughest of times. And so, uh, Roland, it has been fantastic to hear your testimony today, to know that God has led you and, and blessed you in the worst of circumstances. And when it comes to your home and it comes to, you know, everybody loves their house for the most part, but to be constantly dealing with situations that put that at risk and pearl and seeing God do his thing through the midst of that, um, we're, we're happy that God has shown you that favor because you have sought him. Amen. And so uh, on behalf of the 108 participants,